Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. And to answer any initial questions, yes, I did shave a mustache onto my face. So I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you guys because I had the amazing opportunity to sit down with Josh Helton of A Little Long Distance and dive into the art of storytelling. Storytelling is one of those really cliche words that we throw around a lot in the wedding filmmaking community, but it really is so integral to making great wedding films. Josh is literally like the best storyteller in the wedding filmmaking industry. And so I'm really excited for you guys to see what we were able to talk about. And I'm really excited because I was able to learn a ton from our time together. Just as a note, before you dive into this video, you probably should be listening to this more than watching it because for some reason we had a ton of video technical difficulties. So I would advise listening to this. Obviously you can watch it if you want, it's not the most beautiful thing to watch because of all the, the problems that we were having with video, but the stuff that Josh is getting into is so worth listening to, and I'm, I'm really excited for you guys to hear this. So let's dive in. Josh, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, I, I am super excited to, to learn myself from what you have to offer, and kind of as I introduced you a second ago, uh, I'm really excited to talk to you about your storytelling ability. To me, you're a master storyteller, and I'm really excited for the people here in Destination Wedding and Elopement Videographers to, to be able to take away and learn something from your experience um, in, in being a wedding videographer and a storyteller in general. So um, for those of you that don't know Josh Helton, um, he is a little long distance, an amazing name. I wish I found that name. I don't, that's like just, this sounds so great. Um, but you know, uh, I, I know a lot of people know you in this group, but for, for those that don't actually know you, Josh, will you go ahead and kind of uh, tell them who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it, and just like a little bit about yourself, whatever you, uh, totally. the floor's open to you. Yeah, man. Well, thank you again for having me on. And, uh, you know, I've liked your work for a long time too. And I love seeing what you're doing with the group and, uh, and you're out there crushing it. So, um, yeah, man, my wife and I, Jess, we started our business a little long distance seven or eight years ago, uh, started out in the Nashville area, kind of moved around some and have found our way back here now. So we live out in the country, uh, like to garden, play with chickens, kind of do all these fun things, uh, live a simple life, you know, where you're, uh, just getting our, getting our feet in the dirt, hands in the dirt and all that. And, um, yeah, we, uh, do full-time wedding videos. Now we started out doing photography, but kind of have shifted our focus mostly to videos. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's I, like literally since I started seven or eight years ago, I think I've like maybe done, I don't know, three things that aren't weddings. Like in that time, I think it's so funny because I've just, I, I just would not even know where to start shooting something that's not a wedding. I mean, I, I, I like, and I still love shooting weddings. Um, I still feel really passionate about it, but anyway, it's just funny. Um, that's kind of like just become our bread and butter and, and what we just, it aligns a lot with, you know, how we see life and, and it's just a great mix of art and relationships and all those things. So, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, you know, live pretty simple, do a lot of editing and, uh, you know, live the life of a wedding videographer. <laughs> right, right. Just, so I have actually never heard the answer to this. What, where did you come up with the name a little long distance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's see, Jess and I, we we got, we're married we like, but we're both kind of shooting. Uh, okay. So, well, we started dating. She, we went to high school together, but didn't really talk. She was a year above me, way out of my league, all, all that stuff. And she was traveling across the world. She was over in Nepal actually on a big overseas trip. And that's, um, basically like I reached out to her on Facebook. I just got the, you know, the courage one day to whatever. I had nothing to lose. Right. So I, we just started messaging and for whatever reason, I, she was bored or something. And she, she gave me the time of day and so we started messaging there. And so for a couple of months, we were just kind of, yeah, doing that around the world long distance thing. So, uh, you know, fast forward, not that long, not that much further forward, about six months later, we got married and then uh, started our business after that. So we were sitting in this Panera bread one day, kind of like, man, I guess, yeah, I guess we had to come up with a name. And uh, yeah, it, I honestly just kind of like fell out of our heads and we were just like, I mean, it makes so much sense because at the time we were trying to kind of brand to do destination weddings and travel some and, and all that. So it kind of had the ring of, um, you know, our backstory is that we understand the long distance part. And then, um, hope we, you know, kind of has that ring of a travel to it with the distance word and all that. So it's been funny. I mean, we've actually had more one side effect of naming it. That has been, we've had couples that have had that extra connection with us of being like hearing our story and their long distance. And it's like that extra, you know, uh, attachment or emotional connection to, to us and our work. But anyway, yeah, that's the story. That's awesome. So, so you said that like at the time you were, you were branding around like destination weddings, doing kind of like travel weddings and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure having kids and stuff now you're maybe like not reconsidering, but you've kind of maybe changed like your, your direction with it. Are you still shooting destination weddings or have you kind of moved away from doing that? Or are you only taking on a certain amount now? Yeah, totally, man. No, you, you hit it spot on. And we're actually changing our name to a little distance. So 
I'm just playing. Uh, we, I mean, you definitely hit it spot on though, that we, uh, the priorities have shifted in the last couple of years. And um, yeah, we've just tried to, you know how it goes. We went through that spell there at round year four or five where we were just, you know, we did hit a little, you know, we, we were able to take on a decent amount of travel work, but it just totally like crushed us and like was just too much and got so backlogged and so overwhelmed with all the travel was so tired. Um, and that was when we were starting our family too. So that, there was 2018, 2019 or so was kind of a big, you know, had to stop and kind of reprioritize things and all that. And so, yeah, we're at a point now where we kind of have a, uh, a pretty good handle on things in terms of finding a balance, but the travel ones are definitely uh, fewer and far between. And then we're trying to do ones that are still kind of travel if they're out of state, but where maybe we can make a road trip as a family out of it and all that. But as far as ones where I'm actually going out or especially out of country, um, not as much, but we've had a couple where we're able to do it where Jess and I go together and, you know, she second shoots and that. So that's kind of the new direction for us is being able to maybe have a, you know, our handful, maybe five a year or whatever, where Jess and I get to go make a trip out of it, shoot together. And then uh, the rest of them maybe a little bit closer. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And you kind of answered my, my next question, just kind of about you guys before we kind of get into storytelling and stuff, but are you, are you solo shooting or do you have just second shooting with you all the time or just some of the times? Are you both editing as well? Kind of what, how do you guys do that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, I shoot primarily, I mean, probably 75% of the weddings lead shoot. And then we do hire on other shooters from time to time. Um, but it's mo- mostly me and then Jess, like I said, I mean, it probably is only those ones that are going to be out of town. That's kind of like a fun weekend trip for us as well that she might come do it too. So um, other than that, she's home with the babies and, and, um, and all that. But yeah, so we'll hire. Don't really have like a dedicated second shooter. It's more so, uh, you know, scrambling through, you know, put kind of our network to try to find people or, or find somebody local to the area. Um, so yeah. And then, and then I do, I'll do all the editing. And uh, I mean, I could go on about how important Jess has been to our work, but she is a, uh, I mean, in, in ways a better storyteller than I am because she has been such an amazing soundboard over the years of, man, we've just, we've just laughed at some of the stuff I've put together and on the first round I've shown her and she, she's just like, what are you doing? I'm like, dang, you're right. Yeah. And you know, I used to get all my feelings hurt about it and all that, but, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and get Jess on the phone here and we'll, we'll just, if we'll mute your mic real quick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, totally. no, 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 I'm totally. kidding. I was talking to her about some of the stuff this morning, knowing I talked to you and it was, it was just like, you know, she just had such good insight and she really understands. And I, and it's a, something I would tell anyone as a wedding filmmaker is, um, receiving feedback about your work is, in having somebody that understands and is going to be honest and can understand why. I mean, she's just a master. I don't think there's anyone that would be better that I could have to, Hey, here's what I've been working on. Like, is this connecting? Like I, or like there's times I'm getting into something that's a little trendy, you know, or whatever. I'm just losing sight of what's important. And she just snuffs that stuff out and is like, you know, that's, that's not connecting or I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling this way. Like we're trying to take ourselves and take people into a deep place in the heart, you know, and, and she's able to, really hit it on the head. And, and, and I, like I said, I used to get all of my feelings hurt about it because I'm an artist and I can do it all myself and all that. But man, in the last couple of years, I've just realized how much, how powerful it is and how much she elevates our work. And so I'm like always eager to get a first cut out to her and just be like, please tell me, tell me how to make this better. Tell me what to, what's not working here. Um, so yeah, I would say we both, I mean, I'm the one that's actually sitting at the editing bay all day, but um, you know, she'll do the kind of once a week check in and, and see how things are going and kind of offer some feedback. That's awesome. No, that's super cool. I, and I think that speaks volumes to you too, to be able to, I mean, you kind of hit on a second ago, but that's something that to me is super important to becoming better at our craft is having the willingness to, to take critical feedback and not just like sending it to your people that you know are going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so good. But like actually sending it to people that are going to give you some stuff that on a, on a project you've worked 30, 40, 50 hours on that are going to probably rip it apart, but you're okay with that because you know that you want the film, you want the final product to be better and you want to become better as a wedding videographer an editor, colorist, whatever it might be, storyteller. Um, So uh, with that, um, on the note of story, uh, we keep using the word story. I don't want to overuse it in the way that like wedding filmmakers use like the word cinematic or something like that, but it really is important. And so I guess like what would be your definition of, of a story and like how do you think incorporating story into a wedding film helps separate like good films from great films. Hmm. 
Or do you think it does? Great question. Yeah, I mean, no, it's such a great question. And like you said, I mean, it's definitely a hot word thrown around too. And I was just been thinking about it a lot lately, actually, of, you know, it being such a subjective word kind of, right? You know, like everyone just has a different idea of story. Like, I feel like we say it and we think we all know what we're talking about. We're all on the same page. But like, when you say like a good story, like we all, I, th I think of it in the same way of like, we all like different movies and we all like connect with movies in different ways. Like, you know, we all just connect with stories differently. And so, um, you know, for us, yeah, I, I, you know, I love stories like any other human does, but you know, we found, um, over time that we really love ones that are gonna, like I said, I mean, just really pull us into this deep place in our heart. I, I mean, if anyone is into the Enneagram at all, Jess and I are both like classic fours. Are you okay? Um, big side of fours in both of us, which is, you know, uh, just lots of feelings, even these melancholy feelings are just things that take you to kind of a profound place, uh, of, of thinking, you know, beautiful things about life and all that. And so, yeah, we, um, you know, uh, love working with couples that are kind of just willing to, you know, wear the heart on the sleeve and be as, you know, brutally honest about, um, themselves and any kind of, uh, you know, we like to, in kind of a weird way, extract any sort of any sort of loss or any sort of hardship that's been part of their story as well or, or process because I don't know, we find more times than not, there is usually uh, something, you know, some element of that that we kind of dig up. So um, yeah, I, I just feel like for us, you know, I think the ones that feel like the great stories to us are just people that are, it, it, you know, for us, it's just the people. And I feel like them able to, you know, be honest, be in love, be just themselves is is what pulls us into a great story and i feel like it's what, what's so cool is like you know the stories could be uh for different filmmakers or for you know depending on what your style is like it could be so many different things that's like you get hired and i always think of like sculpting with time they're doing these ones that are just so epic and the, the weddings in the story is like the beauty and the epicness of this location and this um the scenery and the um decorations and all that so but yeah for us i feel like you know the people and and uh, feelings and man honestly we just we both cry a lot me and jess that's just how we are we just like to feel things and shed tears it's makes us feel alive i guess <laughs> no totally no that that's that's a great explanation and uh you know something that i i feel like i i've said it differently on when i get on like client calls for the first time you know talking to a bride or groom and i'll, I'll get on and say you know something that's really important to me as your potential wedding videographer is that something that separates uh, a good film from a great film. And I always call it like the secret sauce to like making good films is, is the audio that you're capturing from the wedding day um, and from like outside, you know, events and stuff like that. And like watching some of your films, like uh, this morning, as I was preparing for this interview, I hopped onto your website and I'll watch Chloe and Tyler. And you, you started off with that, uh, very obviously, unless I'm mistaken, it seemed like that was recorded by them and, and not you. Um, and so that was like something extra that they had. And, and that, that was, that was a video excerpt, but also had the audio and stuff. And you went straight into like his vows. Um, and having good audio is something that's so integral from turning a wedding film. That's some cheesy, like Colby Calais music video, like just like pop song that people like, you know, like think of like the classic wedding films from like 2005, 2010, like, you know, um, the cheesy ones, like that turns it from being some weird music video with no real emotion to it to like really getting into knowing people. Um, and, and so like, that's, that's always been like a really cool way of, of extracting emotion from like who these people are, because like without getting them to speak, uh, you're not really, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we, we get emotion, not from like necessarily what we're seeing, but it's like most of the time it's like from what's being said, um, or happening in that frame while they're talking. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a thought I had, um, in conjunction kind of with like what, with what you were saying. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I totally love the, you know, in those elements, I think you'd see in a lot of our videos of bringing in, you know, uh, th those, this, like that proposal that video starts out with a proposal video that Tyler the groom set up himself and I mean for me I, I would say as you as we're expounding on you know what we were drawn to about stories I think um early on we did kind of actually it was our for our wedding video we made we happened to have had converted a lot of our like childhood home videos and 
Um, so, you know, this was seven or eight years ago and, and yeah, we just were like, man, this would be so cool to, you know, weave this in with our, uh, as we're getting married and all that. So obviously we just had such a blast with that and like how any kind of work goes, you, you post it and some other people see it and, and want, so it kind of evolved from there, but I think I do feel the most, you know, connected and inspired by like bringing in that outside footage to wedding days and especially the home video stuff has been really special, uh, to, you know, really, really, I mean, early on, we kind of really had to ask for it or, or pitch to, to people of like, I think this would be cool. But now it's like people are, you know, coming to us because of that element. And, um, you know, it, it is, I mean, I just, I, I don't know that it's for everybody, but like, for us, it just really does make it, it makes it feel so, you know, larger than life, which is how we tell it to our couples too, of like, you know, you're, you're, we view the wedding day is kind of the, the fourth quarter, but like, you have all this stuff leading up to it that, makes it your story. And, and they're totally, you know, grabbing onto all this talk as well of being like, yeah, duh. Like I, I want a video that's going to capture the essence of like, not just this one day as an event, but like bringing all this stuff. And I, and I just love all the organicness of, you know, I mean, I, like, like I would be like that too, like getting the camera on you, you kind of get tense and you're not, you know, it's hard to really break people in full. I mean, there's a, a very rare kind of people that are able to fully be themselves in front of four or five cameras. And so, um, that's why I love bringing all that stuff like off their iPhones and whatever. I don't, I mean, I don't care how messy or shaky or whatever it is. I mean, just, it adds so much realness to me. And, um, yeah, anyways. Yeah. I'm like forgetting that I'm like talking to you, like having an interview and I'm like learning so much, just listening to you, like for like future, like client calls and stuff. Um, for, for, so for, for those of you that haven't like had a chance to go and watch his work, I would encourage you maybe to pause this video and just like go to his website and kind of see what we're talking about because, Josh definitely has like if there was a niche for like, you know, being the guy that does the the home video, the raw stuff, the iPhone videos and stuff like that to incorporate into like this cool cinematic look, wedding film. Josh is the guy. Um, and so like go to his website and like see see those things that he's using to incorporate in there and kind of uh, you'll you'll get a little bit bit better understanding uh, about about what we're talking about. Um, and so with that, um, you kind of mentioned a second ago talking about it back in the beginning, you kind of had to ask for this stuff, you know? And so I feel like we're kind of, the conversation is going toward like this story that, that you're creating, the story that you're creating in your wedding films, a lot of it's coming from, you know, not the fourth quarter per se, like obviously you have their wedding and stuff in there with the vows and everything, but you're also flashing back to old things and stuff like that. So how, what, what can you kind of describe your process when you're talking about, um, when you're making this story, um, in regards to like pre-production, um, including the wedding day and post-production, maybe just like the whole process of like how you go about like getting the most out uh, of your clients, um, yeah. to be able to tell their story in the best way possible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, after they, they book, um, you know, well, on the initial, the initial inquiry, you know, it's, you know, we're able to gather some from there is probably the same for most people. You can kind of get a sense for this couple. And, and, you know, so that's a bit of a filtering process. And then, um, yeah, after they book, you know, what we do send out two separate questionnaires, um, leading up, we do one of them at three months before the wedding and one's one month before the wedding. And we actually specifically make the one that's three months before, um, it's, it's really just only about them actually. So it's like, again, kind of the pitch of like us wanting to be, uh, at least look like to them that were these kind of, yeah, master storytellers or give off that illusion at least that it's like, Hey, we really want to, uh, dig as much into you and, and, and not just about, we're not here just because it's a job and, and all this and that. So that one is like solely just only, you know, nothing about the wedding day, essentially. So it's all questions about their, you know, personal preferences of music and movies and uh, this, you know, and then maybe what work they connect with of ours and all that stuff. But then, yeah, we also just ask questions too of like, you know, will, you know, will there be anybody that you're missing and, uh, you know, at your wedding day or, uh, you know, what do you want to remember about your wedding 50 years from now? Um, so some of that stuff kind of starts shedding some of the layers back too. And uh, I really, and then we do, you know, we do a video chat uh, with the couple. I would find that, you know, super mandatory to do beforehand too. And, um, so yeah, you know, I mean the goal going into it and I'm sure your process is similar, just wanting to feel like these are just not strangers and, and that we can really, um, uh, have a connection and, you know, it makes it more enjoyable on our end as well too. I think of, uh, you know, I've done it before where we're not doing this legwork beforehand and it, mm -hmm. you go in and it's just like, I don't know who to even look for or like, what am I, who are these people? What is the story? And I just don't feel that inspired. And, um, yeah, almost every time now I just feel like that legwork beforehand, um, by the time I get there, I'm, I'm 
you know, it, it kind of goes in hand with how I just view the world of, you know, my personal belief is that, you know, God made all of humanity very beautiful and all humans very like full of worth and value and, and really fascinating, I guess, if we're, you know, willing to dig into it. And I think it's easy to slip into the rut that I've, I've done before, of like just kind of you cruising, you're kind of just showing up and shooting the weddings and all that. But um, I just, you know, I, I just, I guess, honestly, though, it doesn't get that tiring of like, uh, it's just so mind blowing, like two random strangers coming together and, um, you know, and involve millions of people. So anyways, we get to the wedding day, you know, you know how that goes. We, we do the thing, not, not probably not too much different than other people. And, right. but at the same time, I do feel like we are trying to look for, I'd say, I guess one thing maybe we do do a little different is I definitely do not think I, or we are fantastic. Like I, I never like call ourselves like cinematographers. I just don't feel like I use the camera that well. Like I look at your work and I'm like, holy crap. You're like, what are you doing now? Like I don't, I just watch people's work like you and, and Henry's and, and sculpting. And what, I mean, all these people that I'm just like, dude, this is just on another level, man. It, it's really incredible stuff. And, um, you know, I think I've just tried to take the most simplistic approach in a way to our cameras to be able to, um, you know, capture just, I just feel so passionate about the moments are just so fast and fleeting on the wedding day that I want to not let anything be preventative to the point where, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, I don't, I don't even know how to use a gimbal and like, I've never used like a monitor on my screen. Like I just, I don't even know how to use that stuff. I mean, it might benefit me. I don't know, but I, I, I just have found You're like, a purist. I, I, <laughs> yeah, we'll call it that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I've, I've tried them out a couple of times and I just, I guess I just want it as small as I can to see, I don't know, feel like a home video camera almost where I'm like, just able to emotionally be completely present and make actually my emotional, um, you know, capacity and, and my heart be fully in it so that I don't have to worry so much about my gear. Like, I just don't even want to be thinking about my gear because yeah, like I had a really interesting experience last, uh, this past week and my youngest brother got married and I, you know, I don't know if you've had family get married, but, um, and, you know, since you've been doing wedding videos or close friends, but it just like, it just lifts the veil of like, whoa like what is important like what do i want like I'm, I'm just sitting there so many times throughout the day we had some other people shoot it for us and, and they did a great job um and then we're gonna we're gonna edit it soon but yeah it was like in the moment though i could you know sense myself looking around being like i i could on the wedding day i know what i would be inclined to want to do right now like focus on uh you know just a sick shot of them during this first dance right now and like get a cool light flare and like all this stuff, but I'm looking around and I'm seeing like my parents and my extended family and like her fault and like my siblings are all sitting together having this moment. And it's like, whoa, that's the kind of stuff that if I wasn't, uh, you know, caring about the couples leading up or aware of that on the wedding day of who were the most important people, like I would miss those moments. And I find it really important to, uh, I, I guess I've just, the longer I've done this, the more I believe that in 50 years, that is going to matter more to see see those moments that especially that they don't see on the wedding day that's especially from there and I feel like really going to bring the story to life of like yeah it's I mean it's one thing I mean we definitely try to get our cool glamour shots and make them look sick I mean I think they a lot of couples want that from us as well but um you know definitely trying to get, just catch those fleeting moments of the tears being shed and the emotion being shown so anyway that's all wedding day stuff and then uh yeah I mean by the time we get to post-production we usually kind of have a good idea and you know how I mean uh, you usually maybe get a song in your head and all that stuff. You just try to start mixing with calling and looking through and hoping the, um, you know, I would say, I would say we're kind of like half and half of like you were saying about audio being inspiring to, um, I don't know. I, I find often that like a visual, like some, you know, like for like, I don't know, a groom crying or, or a dad crying or something like that visually like paired with, the right kind of song or whatever, like is, is oftentimes my starting point, I think. So I'm like letting that kind of be what, what pulls me in and starts crafting the beginning stages of the film. And then kind of like, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't, it's different, I guess each one, but um, yeah. So I just, those are the ones I feel most inspired on to, uh, you know, taps into that foreness of me <laughs> that like I'm uh, feeling something deeply. So anyway, uh, so yeah, man. Yeah, no, that that was awesome. No, that was I really liked, I like the way that you put it. Like uh, you know, talking about about capturing moments 
on the wedding day. And you kind of, I, my next question was going to be about editing and you kind of answer that, like with your process, I might get back into that in a second, but, yeah. uh, you kind of hit on like, well, first off, I, th- I think you're a great cinematographer or whatever we want to call it. Filmmaker, like looking at like, like that Chloe and Tyler film, it looked great to me. Like everything looked super beautiful. Um, but how, how are you balancing, you know, capturing, capturing moments as, as you put it and, and making sure that like a film looks good because like, let's say like a first dance is happening, um, between a father and the bride, but the mom's off, like, just like bawling her eyes out in the corner outside of like where your lights are. And you're just like, as a cinematographer, you're like, Oh, like, what do I do here? Like, do I go film her? Do you go film her during that? That's just an example, but kind of expound upon it. Yeah, however, that, like you want, like how, how do you balance that? That is a great example. And one that I, I, again, I think I was thinking about kind of that exact situation at my brother's wedding. And I think you have to, again, peel back to what we were talking about earlier, earlier, that's all tied in of, you know, what kind of stories are you connecting with? What is your brand? Like, I just, I think the answer could be a little different for each people, for each, you know, company and and person, depending on what they're going for. But for us, man, 10 times out of 10, I'm going over there and bumping my ISO to like, 10,000 just to catch that moment because it is so important to me to not miss it and for them to have that in um and, and i think oh, it's something just turned that, off <laughs> oh, that's okay. that was yeah. moody and cinematic here we go yeah <laughs> that's great like first dance kind of. <laughs> Let, let's let's capture this moment here <laughs> whatever it still looks good um thanks yeah man so i i just I think there, I went through a spell where I was trying to figure out who we were and like what our brand was and what we wanted to be about. And I, I felt some insecurity of, I mean, you know, I'm kind of joking earlier about not being a, like calling myself a good cinematographer and all that. I'm, I'm really okay with, it. I'm not trying to put myself down. I really just um, have found that I'm just uh, inclined more to want to be obsessed with these moments and capture them honestly in a way that a home video camera would of like, I just started reflecting the more I look at home videos of my childhood or anyone else's. I'm like, um, you know, this is the realization of like, you just don't, you're not thinking about how this is framed or shot or whatever you're, you're pulled into who this person was at that time and place. And like, that's what I, you know, there's lots of companies that can do all the beauty stuff and the, and the glam and, and they'll kill your first dance every time. And, and all that. And, uh, I just, we're just probably not the right company. If you just want your whole first dance shot the whole way through and, you know, not focused on anything else. And so we try to find, I mean, to answer your question, I guess, like I've tried to craft over the years, if there's sort of a, I think again, it's some of it's, you know, you've probably heard the phrase of, uh, what is, I don't know, beginning with the end in mind or thinking with the edit in mind or whatever it is. And that like, I'm, uh, you know, trying to think about, I want, I want to create that, the highlight video to where it it pulls you in and helps you understand what's going on and captures the essence of it. I mean, the first dance we can keep going with, because it's a good example of like, my personal opinion is that most couples only are going to care to see, you know, maybe three or four shots of that first dance. And so I'm going in my head, the checklist of like, you know, got a, got a decent wide, I got an emotional tight, like, or, or whatever it is. I mean, I don't have specific ones each time, but it's like, I'm able to, I'm, I'm thinking about it in my head to where like, okay, you know, it's the checklist going off, you know, and I'm sure you kind of do the same too, where, you know, I, I guess once I'm getting more and more of those checked and the same goes for the ceremony too, and the other parts of the day, like I'm realizing I have a higher risk tolerance to be looking for other moments when I'm, as I'm, you know, there's a correlation of the more I'm getting what I need in terms of, you know, my shots for the edit now, like I can risk a little bit more looking, I can look, I can peel away from my camera and again, be emotionally involved in what else is going on out here so that I can, again, all it takes is a three second shot or something of, you know, the mom crying, but you have to be in tune with it and you have to be ready for it. And I mean, at least basic, like have some basic understanding of how your camera works to, (laughs) you know, get over there and grab it real quick. But it's, man, it makes all the difference for me, at least when I sit down to edit then of taking it to the next level when I have shots of, you know, parents crying. I mean, I was watching your Montana teaser this morning and like you have that shot of, was it like a grandma just that was like at the ceremony? I mean, that's, dude, that's so epic. And that's exactly what I'm talking about of, um, you know, just how much those moments resonate with us, but how much they must mean to the couple, you know, because they're not seeing those. Totally. And I, I have a lot of couples that they, they want, like, obviously them and their love and their story to be the primary focus, but something that also is good to remind our couples of is like, Hey, like, you know, your grandmother that's there or your mom and stuff like, yeah, they're going to be, uh, hopefully like Lord willing, they're going to be around, you know, for a good bit longer, but eventually they won't be. 
And, and like, you know, even with them being there, you want that, that memory captured. But like these, these wedding films, these heirlooms, not to be cheesy, but they truly are like, we're capturing their family in time. And like, I definitely uh, swing to the far end of like some, I'm so obsessed with just getting like the perfect shot. Like I, I was sometimes when it's in the reception, I will not film something if my lights are not on it. Like I like it, my lights direct exactly where my camera goes, but you're almost like motivating me because I know kind of how I am in my tendency, but like to hire just somebody on a wedding day to follow me around and be like, look, give them a telephoto lens. Be like, hey, like no matter what, like you just point this at him. I don't care what it looks like. Obviously try making it good, but like capture that moment. Like get, make sure you get that, that moment captured in time. I think, um, yeah. And that, I think you're hitting on a really good note too, of like your, you, like your couples are coming to you for that high end, high quality production, like amazing, like everything, you know, uh, you know, looks great. So it's, I, but I think the great point is like you said, they may not even know that, that they want that they need shots of their grandparents or their parents or whatever. And I think that is what I've become passionate about is knowing those things more than they do. And I think it's our duty as wedding videographers to do that, you know, knowing we're going to bless them in years, even if it's like, they are probably more inclined to be thinking that they want just the video of just themselves. And, and, and even our couples, they probably are, you know, not exactly thinking about other family members and stuff. But I just think once all the dust settles and like the wedding hype is done, and they have this video even a couple years later, like I just really believe that most people are going to be so grateful to have yeah, shots of like, especially if, the, if there's any kind of relationship with grandparents or parents. Like, I, I mean, even if it's not pretty now, I, I really try to include a shot or two just because, I mean, again, I feel like it ha it's giving up a little bit of like, I know I lost a little bit of like my, uh, or I could give up a little bit of my artistry, like, you know, street cred to be like, well, I'm just going to give this shot, you know, put this shot out there that's yeah. whatever. But it's actually been fun. I've been really uh, surprised, honestly, of how many, filmmakers have connected with it too of being like it's cool to it, you know you're all right putting stuff in there that's not not perfect but it's a, a moment i just i don't know I just because all of us humans man we just we just connect with realness you know stuff that feels like real life <laughs> absolutely and I, think, I think that's like something good for like anybody watching this to take away from is like you know ex explaining these things to your, your couples is so important like making sure that your couples understand things and that again is like a, a really good lead into my next question for you a lot of us don't have the the portfolio that you do of like incredible storytelling uh, embedded inside of our wedding films that like are actually being displayed on our website. And so, you know, you said back in the day, like you might have had to ask for it more. But now because you do have the bandwidth of, you know, having filmed so many different things and included so much like home video and iPhone road trip videos and stuff like that, uh, people are coming to you with it. So what would your advice be to someone that, you know, it doesn't have that in their portfolio. How, what kind of like, I guess, vernacular can they use with their couples to kind of like, to get them in the mindset of thinking like, Hey, this is actually really important for me to, um, to give to my wedding videographer, um, to, to be able to make like a good crafted story for my film. Totally, man. I, I think a lot of it does start with that, your contact form and it, uh, you know, I think opening, you know, Think of thinking about, I guess, the setting first, like what, what kind of films do I resonate with or do I want to be making? And then figuring out like, how do I get my couples to tell me that on the initial lead form? Like, how do I get them to share something about who they are or like, tell me, you know, get, I, I've seen people do, you know, like tell me the few words about yourself or about the vision for your day or like, or uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could go as far as, you know, even, you know, expound on your story and, and share, you know, have any, any difficulties uh, leading up or, you know, anything that's just going to help them, uh, open up a little bit about that. And then if it was me starting out again, I mean, some of this kind of happened organically because some people do share more than others, as we know on the contact forms, but it, uh, basically like if somebody shared something that was like, um, you know, I, I just have found that we've done it a good handful of, of couples who have some like a parent loss or like, a, they've lost a, parent leading up to the wedding or something. And I think we did a couple of those films early on and they were actually for good buddy, good friends of mine or something that, or, uh, or, or somebody filled out that form and said something about that. And like I said, I, I connect so much with sitting in stuff that makes life feel really real that I was like, if that, if, a, if a lead came in like that, I basically early on would do whatever I could do to shoot that wedding, you know? So that for that, you know, and most people probably heard that advice to, you know, you know, basically do, a couple of weddings for free or whatever, build your portfolio. But I mean, I, I probably was doing that even a couple of years in just knowing, like, I just knew I was going to be so inspired. It was going to feel like a, you know, passion project for me. And, um, 
it, it not even feel like work. And so fast forward, like it, this is just so wild, man. I'll, I'll share this just cause it's fresh in my mind, but just in the last couple of days, we just booked this couple, uh, that, that are getting married next year and they're like in their sixties and they saw our work. And basically, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's so cool because they resonate with the story aspect of it and that he, the, the groom to be lost his first wife a couple years ago and the bride to be has never been married before, but they want to like have a honoring nod to his first wife. And they have this whole story that they were just, we had a 45 minute phone call yesterday and they're sharing all this with me. And, you know, I'm on the, like the verge of tears just hearing about it because it's just such a beautiful redemptive story. But it's wild to think that the films that they were watching that they were really connecting with were, were some of those that I was doing essentially for free or very cheap. So it's, I mean, it is, I mean, I think that same advice that, that you would give for, you know, about getting into the destination wedding market to some extent and all that. But for us, it was like, you know, we did like traveling and we still do, but like that we just wanted to feel like as much as we are capable of feeling. And so that was kind of our approach with um, trying to attract, I guess, those kind of clients that were, um, you know, maybe had that sort of element or, but yeah, anyway, but I do think it could start with needing to see that. I don't think if your lead form is not set up right, I think it can, you're just going to be getting probably a lot of generic things. And it's kind of, it's kind of on us then to not, not know from the get go, like if there is more going on there, you know? Yeah, no, that's great, dude. That's, that's awesome. That, that little story you said about booking that wedding, that like almost got me teary out right there. That that's, that's an amazing storytelling opportunity. And, and honestly, like for those of us that I know there's people out there that are wedding videographers that are doing it because it's a job. And obviously we're doing it because it's a job too. But like even, even myself, like I, I love what I, I what, or I guess what I'm saying, even myself, like I, I find myself maybe not because of story, like doing things cheaper, uh, even like last year or something like that, but like location, I'm very inspired by location and landscapes and stuff like that. And so it's, it's, it's what fuels you. It's, it's, it's what, what is it that's fueling you? Like, obviously a good story like that will fuel me too, but like, um, you know, having a passion for this stuff too, goes a long way in wanting to, to, to make a good story because it's not, when it comes time to sit down in the editing suite, it's not just another wedding film. You're like, this is their wedding film. Like this is their wedding film and I got to do everything I can to make this amazing. And not just the editing suite, but obviously the day of the wedding, that moment when you're turning around to capture that three seconds of the mom crying on the sidelines, that's, that's because you care about making them a good story and not so much about, you know, just being this cookie cutter wedding videographer. Um, and, 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 and obviously the pre-production that as you're talking about is we got in, hopefully, I mean, I'm learning a lot from like what you're saying. Um, hopefully everybody watching this will get something too. Um, I guess as kind of like a, a closing question, like we talked about a, a lot of different things we've kind of hit heavily on, you know, the home video and getting to know your clients and stuff like that. Do you have any, like, if you could just kind of quantify it down into however long you want to say it, but like quantify it down into like maybe some like tips or tricks or like recommendations to, to people watching this about like, Hey, this is like just a surefire way that like automatically your wedding films are going to get better. If you like you, you do this. Just put your spot there. Care, <laughs> yeah. care a lot, yeah. man. I mean, do whatever you like. I just think both of us have shared in this chat what we care a lot about and have removed as much fluff from away from that, you know, to be able to continue caring. And I find as I get older, I guess, outside of wedding videography, even that it's easy to stop caring like about a lot of things. And um, I think, again, treating, valuing every like, like even for us, like I know it does. I know if you look just at our like default landing page on our website. Like we've been so lucky to work with some really, really incredibly inspiring couples and very fun, very high energy. Um, and so we're very lucky that we, we do get a lot of those, but I mean, we're the same as anyone else. Like, you, you know, not, not every story inspires you in the same way or makes you feel the feels and, and all that. And, uh, but you just, I just think it's helpful to treat everyone like that and use everyone as a way to, you know, remind yourself of, human value and a human story and that they have a story and that it's important that they got there too. And let like, no, stop, you know, don't let your mind stop being blown by just people coming together to, to get married and that you can be part of an instrument to help them. You know, I, I mean, I know it's far fetched, but I really do believe because we've had a couple of times and maybe you have two. I mean, it, all it really takes is hearing just one couple say something like, you know, the year or two later, like we, we got in a fight or like things were really hard and we like watched our wedding video and it was so helpful. And you're like, Dang, like 
And I feel like we've just heard that enough times throughout the years that it's like, you know, we really do believe it. And, and um, so, yeah, man, I just feel like I just hope for myself that I uh, don't stop caring. And I, and I feel like caring is a little different than like, I, I don't always like maybe I'm not passionate all the time and maybe the passion kind of ebbs and flows. Um, but I feel like you can show up and not feel passionate, but you can still care about what you're doing. And um, I just think coming in and, and, you know, whatever you have to do, if it's, you know, your first, you know, first moments when you wake up or you got the sticky notes all over your computer or whatever, that's just reminding you of the importance of your work. Uh, and that's what I try to do is just remember how important it is, even if it, again, even if it's far fetched to just, you know, know that the work we're doing, I think has a lot of value because the people in it are very valuable and, and then you'll be ready, you know, you'll be ready. You just got to keep grinding and one of them will, you know, the right one will come along. You just got, and I think if you're staying sharp, staying with that mindset, you're going to be ready to, you know, crush the one when it falls in your lap. Wow. Um, that, so guys, if you're watching this and you made it this far, that little excerpt that Josh just said right there, has the power to like completely change. I mean, me, even me talking to you right now is is like changing my mindset on things, but has the power. Like if you apply what he's saying to really change the, the direction uh, of, of your wedding videography business. I think that's something that, that my mind, I kind of ping on this, Josh, whenever I ask somebody for like a little tangible tip and trick, and instead of giving me like a, like a, an actual tangible thing they get a little bit more philosophical with it and they tell me like a little bit deeper of of a meaning behind it like when you're talking about caring and and like you know striving to do better and stuff that my mind pings on those things because that's the stuff that i you know everybody's always looking for like the quick easy thing to do but whenever somebody gives you an answer about like you know delving deeper into something if that's not as easy sometimes to understand and to apply but if people actually like listen to these things, like as far as, you know, learning to actually care more, learning to like really care about what you're doing. That's, I think that's where, where change actually happens um, for ourselves and for our end product. And like, you're right. Like the more that we apply that, the right one's going to eventually come along. And I'll speak to testament to that as well. I've done lots of free weddings in the past or, you know, the cheap weddings where I didn't do travel. And obviously I'm to a point now where I charge for that pretty consistently. But like even last year, like all of that was, I I wondered what I was working toward, what I was working toward, what I was working toward. Then I got like a really cool story, like Kari and Alden up in in Glacier National Park. And just looking back on that, I was like, wow, it's so worth it. I don't know if I would have booked them before if I hadn't paved the way of caring about what I do so much before it. And, and and you just never know when the, that thing is going to come around the corner. So like, guys, just keep striving, keep putting your best out there, and 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 don't and don't get frustrated that like it's not happening in the now. Like you're 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 growing and your business is growing, and it's it's probably closer to um, to being on your plate than you know. Um, so I, I'm I'm really encouraged. I'm I'm finishing up a wedding film today, and so I got I got some like I'm all motivated to go do. It. I'm gonna get some coffee. The same, dude. This is fun. It's fun to this nerd is out fun. a little bit. Um, yeah. For sure. No, I love I I really like talking about stuff like this. Um, real quick before we end, um, for guys, for the people that don't already follow you, where's the best place for people to connect with you and follow your work? Yeah, yeah. We have a website, a little long distance.com, and we have an Instagram at a little long distance, and. Uh, I guess that's about all we have, really. You guys, Are you on YouTube? Uh, no, yes, but no. Don't go look for it. <laughs> <laughs> don't go. Don't go to YouTube. We have a Vimeo, our Vimeo is decent. Yeah, Vimeo.com slash a little long distance. Uh, YouTube is pretty foreign to us. We we have some stuff on there, but I don't even know how it looks to other people. So <laughs> don't go on. Don't there. go to his YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Do not. It <laughs> It's not out there. Uh, oh man. Um, yeah, man. Anyone can reach out. I'm always available through uh, Instagram or email or whatever. So yeah, uh, dude. Just, thanks. You know. Thanks for, uh, you know, I feel like sometimes there's like a veil behind some of like the, the, the people in the industry that, that are really good at what they do and, and being able to have insight into, into your creative process and what you've been doing and your story. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that take a lot away from it, including myself. So like sincerely, thank you for coming on and talking about this. I know you're a busy guy and you got a family and, um, you got a lot to do. So, um, yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for, thanks for coming on and sharing with us kind of like your, your storytelling process. Oh, they do. I appreciate you having me on. And like I said, it's a, it's an honor to, to have been asked and, uh, I hope, something I said resonated with someone. So thanks for having me on. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope that you were able to take something away from everything that Josh had to offer. Super kind of him to give us all this information. I left the interview feeling very motivated to go out there 
and make better wedding films through better storytelling. If you haven't had a chance to join our Facebook group, Destination Wedding and Elopement Videographers, I'll have a link to that group down in the description of this video. I'll be posting stuff like this from time to time, hopefully every month or so, with creatives in the industry that have a lot to offer that we can learn from. Also, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, just click the big red button, it's not that hard. Uh, and I would appreciate it. So uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope we all learned something here and I'll see you next time.